healthy and happy, smart ergonomics, stretches, and more for makers. What's the more you ask? Well, in this book, we're going to look at everything that you can do to sew pain-free until you're 100 years old, because that is my goal, and that is what I'm gonna help everybody that out there do. We're going to look at the lighting in your studio, the um, way that your, your um, stations, as I like to call them, your workstations, um, are set up in relation to each other. Of course, we're gonna look at your cutting table, your pressing station, your sewing setup, and then we'll also get into some of the techniques you do to do these daily activities, uh, whether it be rotary cutting or pressing or sewing, and how you best set up for that. In addition, the, there is uh, a lot of stretches in it as well too. The first half is all the ergonomics that are involved, and the second half are the stretches. Now I am certified in office ergonomics, which transfers beautifully to this. I've been a personal trainer for uh, 16 years, and helped a lot of people improve their posture, their range of motion, different uh, areas like that. And so the stretches that I've designed for quilters, shall we say, for uh, the reason that they're for sewists and quilters is that you don't have to get on the floor for any of them. And the book is beautiful, uh, I must say. The illustrations are beautiful. All of the stretches are done in their sewing room. And so you can actually see people doing them within the sewing room, near their ironing board, whatever it's going to be. The, uh, and, and that helps out a lot. So one thing that we're gonna look at um, to start with today is your sewing machine and how you normally get set up for that. Now, there's a lot of people working from home these days and so you've probably seen a lot of things on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook about their ergonomic setup within their home and how they're working from home. And that does transfer quite nicely to our sewing machine area because we are all going for that magic 90 degree number and ergonomics, ergonomists will always talk about the 90 degree um, angle as being the most ergonomic. Keep in mind that that is a general rule. Sometimes it's actually 95 or 100. We never want it to be 85, but anything from 90, anything that's gonna keep our shoulders down, that is the whole key. When your shoulders are down, usually everything above it is happier. And so when your shoulders are down, you're not getting tension, you're not getting headaches and things like that. Well, one of the quickest ways to bring your shoulders up is to have your sewing machine too high for you. And because then anytime you're sewing, you need to come up and over. And so if you're setting your sewing machine up on top of your table, then think about this. If this is my table and I'm now at 90 degrees, and I'm at 90 degrees to this table because that's where my sewing bed is. That's where I'm living. That's where I'm working. But let's say you're setting it up on your kitchen table and your, your sewing machine is now this high. Well, you've got to either lower that machine or raise yourself up to it. And when we're looking at chairs and how we're going to do to raise things, you can use cushions, you can um, raise the height of an office chair. There's a lot of different ways you can do that, and there's lots of different ways covered in the book as well. For me, even though I have a chair that does raise, I still find I just need that little bit more. And so I like using um, a folded blanket on here instead of a cushion and I actually find it stays in place uh, very nice for me and that's just what works great for me. But let's say that I'm sewing at the kitchen table and now all of a sudden my sewing machine is here and I've got a dining room chair and that's not going to, a little blanket's not going to work for that. So then just make sure that you have a cushion that will raise you enough so that again your arms can end up in this position. So ideally we're looking at you know head over the shoulders, uh, shoulders back and down, shoulders down, uh, sitting up nice and tall, feet flat on the floor to get your bearings. And then your arms at 90 degrees or perhaps 95. And that's how you're going to begin your sewing journey. We're going to try to uh, avoid doing any of this and getting in. And one thing that can help with that, uh, depending on um, our age or our, the age of our eyes, let's just say, is readers. Readers are the simplest way to bring your work to you rather than you having to come to your work. So if you're sewing and you know you have to be looking down to see what you're doing, but you don't necessarily have to be looking in. Another uh, thing that comes in quite handy, a lot of us are watching um, TV and movies and um, YouTube tutorials, attending workshops and classes in the quilting world, but a lot of us are doing things like that with our computers or our tablets nearby. First of all, make sure that your computer is raised so that when you're looking at it, you're trying to get as much as eye level as possible and we're not looking down again. If you find that you're doing a lot of sewing with the computer on, with bright lights on to help, 
um, try the blue glasses. The lenses are actually yellow, uh, but try them because they can be a help too. Uh, and I actually have a pair that are, I have a, this pair that has zero magnification and I tend to actually use it more on my computer. And then I have ones that are the same, but they have my 1.25 magnification that I do use at the sewing table. So just something to keep in mind, a little bit something extra to do with that. One thing that I am a big fan of is what I call spontaneous stretching. And that means every time you stop to think about whether or not you're gonna change your bobbin thread, whether or not you're gonna keep going, or should I do the border now, or should I work on something else, then you're gonna stop and just give yourself a little stretch while you're thinking about things. That being said, if you've been at your machine for you know the last 24 hours straight without getting up and moving, let's hope not, but if that's the case, then even before you do your spontaneous stretch, then maybe get in the habit of every time just pumping a little hair, a few shoulder rolls, a few handshakes. It's about getting the blood moving. And so always keep that in mind. Stretch, it, it, stretch spontaneously whenever possible. And if you have been sewing for a long time, then just warm up a little bit before you do any of those stretches. So one thing that I have in the book um, is I have enlisted the aid of 18 other individuals to provide their favorite tips and tricks for sewing or for healthy living or for living pain-free or for living to 100 and sewing to 100. Now, 15 of these individuals are quilting professionals or quilters, not necessarily quilting professionals, and the other three are health and wellness professionals. What I've done with the, um, the quilting professionals is they sent me all their favorite tips with, in terms of, you know, it could be something as simple as, you know, Jenny Doan likes to say, don't, um, don't sew, don't eat Cheetos while you're sewing unless you're using orange fabric. It could be something as simple as that. It could be something like Susie Quilts has great tips in there for her standing sewing desk, which is another big thing that's come out now within everybody working from home and doing their sit stand desks. People are thinking a little bit more now, like, well, you know, maybe I want to look at getting a sit-stand sewing table. That is covered in the book as well. So there are 15 uh, quilting, I, I didn't realize that, quilters, I didn't realize before now how many of them were modern quilters. Um, and there'll be a full list posted, uh, well, there's um, on, my, on my website, um, under my, there's a blog about the sewing long, which is coming up. The sewing long is really fun because what I've done is I've taken blocks from all of the, almost all of these tipsters and we put them together into a quilt and it's called so grateful for 2021 and you can find out more about that on Facebook but it's it's really a lot of fun there's tons of great prizes uh, from some of the people that are that are in the book as well AccuQuilt, uh, the lap app uh, Rosalie Brown simply fit for just all kinds of fun things one thing that um, we want to focus on when we are looking at these tips and tricks is how that um, how they can best help us in our sewing area. The information that I provide throughout the entire book is not based on what worked for me or what worked for someone else. It's all based on um, knowledge that I received for through all my various certifications. I'm a certified personal trainer. I'm a registered holistic nutritionist. I'm certified in office ergonomics, uh, older adult training, uh, a few a few more things as well. And so the information that I'm giving you is based on research, is based on guidelines, and it's things that transfer to the general population. There will always be times where you need a little bit of extra something something, and that's okay too. And there's lots of different tips in the book too to help with that. So think about going to the CNT Publishing website. The book is available there. Uh, it's also available on Amazon. Have a look, have a look through the table of contents is listed actually on the write-ups for the book. And so have a look through that and see what works for you. And I'm, I'm super proud of it. And it's taken, um, you know, not just 16 years, but actually over 20 years of all the knowledge I've gained throughout the certifications that I've worked with over the years and how we can best put that forward so that we can sew to 100. That's, that's the whole goal, right? Mm -hmm.